What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk and discuss two amazing trimmers on the market and put them head to head in a comparison video for you to decide which one is going to work best for your business. So this video is going to have my personal thoughts and opinions in it as well. So uh, our two trimmers we're talking about is the Steel FS111R and then we've got the Echo SRM 3020. So I hope you enjoy. Let's jump right into this. guys a quick disclaimer here echo did supply these chosen products for trial both the fs 111 r and the 3020 the 3020 they did send me the 111 r i picked up personally at the dealership they sent me these for me to provide my honest and unbiased feedback on my experiences while using and testing these products so one thing we're going to show you on these is the code start uh, these have not been started since yesterday, so uh, it's been a full day pretty much since either one's been started. We're going to show you both of these easily start. All you do with the Echo is we're going to prime it a couple times here. We're going to put it on a choke. Uh, I'm not going to give this any gas whatsoever. And then we're going to take the choke off once it tries to start. Now we're going to show you the code start on the steel FS111R. Same thing, we're going to prime it here. <clears throat> I'm going to turn the choke on, and then uh, we're going to pull it a couple times. It should start as well, no gas given. So as you can tell, both of these very easily start from a code start. Now one thing I want to show you is uh, the noise difference between the two of these. I'm going to start them, I'm going to run them full throttle, and we are going to talk about uh, the noise of the engine. So let's start the Echo 3020 first, and then we're going to full throttle it, and then we will go to the 111R and do the same. So. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to talk about the speed feed heads and uh, you know the steel head here, the swath, um, things of that, and then we're going to work our way down to the engine displacements. So uh, on the steel, you have a 16.5 inch swath that comes with these, and it comes with the you know their standard uh, head. To load the line in and so uh, how this works is is you take and you, you put a little loop or you don't even have to put a little loop in it but you put the string through and then you wind it up now I find both of these heads after doing this hold close to about the same amount of line so no issues with line uh, if you're going to use these for your weekly bi-weekly even taller you know grass properties things of that now uh, all the echoes come with the speed feed heads everybody uh, seems to know what the speed feed is um, very simple all you do is load it up there's some lines on here you just take it line them up run your string through it and then twist the head and it pulls your line in now uh, this has the speed feed 450 on it so it's going to hold a little bit more line than your standard 400 is going to and the echo comes with a 20 inch swath so you're looking at a uh, quite a bit of difference there three three and a half inch difference between swath alone and uh, so let's take and uh, you know greasing these 
both have the screw right here at the head. They're both easily greasable, easily maintainable when it comes to this. All right, guys, now we're going to move on up the trimmer here. We're going to talk a little bit about comfort. But before we do, I do want to tell you that both of these will take a brush cutter attachment on them. So uh, if you decide you want to cut small saplings and things of that, you can get the kit for either one of these to do so. Moving on up the shafts here, we are going to talk about the features of the handles and things of that nature. So starting here, uh, as you can tell, the Echo handle is tilted and angled more toward the user, and the steel handle is pretty straight. Hopefully you can see this on video. It's pretty straight. Both grips are very, very comfortable. Uh, so you comfortability on these, uh, even the grips up here, are very comfortable on both of these. Comfort is not gonna be an issue regardless. The thing that I like to say most is, with this being angled, <clears throat> it seems like if you're a taller person uh, or you know 5'8 or a little taller, this, by this being angled, is going to put you flatter on the ground uh, to where you don't have to bend over as much and, and do any hurting of your back if you have anything like that. Now the steel, it's still going to do the same thing, but it feels like it angles the head down more because of the way that this handle is built. Now you can adjust both of these. As you can tell, you can move this up, you can move this handle up. So uh, two Allen you know, star screws on both of these. Either one of them are easily adjustable to move toward, you know, closer to the user, shall I say. So let's go up to the top here. Both of these have a safety on the top. Both are very well uh, feeling like both feel very good in the hands um, honestly if I'm to say one or the other I'm going to uh, honestly say the steel feels better to me and the reason being is it seems like this part right here on the steel <clears throat> is not as wide I guess you could say um, just the way it whoo, just the way it is uh, holding it in my hand it does not feel as bulky as the Echo does when it comes to uh, this part right here being wider. Now, I really like the trigger on the Echo because I feel that with the steel, this would be easily breakable in some shape, way, form, or fashion. Could be totally wrong. I've not had any issues with it, but it could, you know, uh, have a problem, could be a problem in the future for some people. So uh, comfortability wise, I really do like the steel handle here more than the echo handle now when it comes to shutting these off and uh, starting them in the start position shutting them off putting them on the run position uh, steel outshines the echo in my opinion on this just because i find myself even though i've been a, a long time echo user i find that when i shut it off if i don't turn it back on immediately like i normally do sometimes i forget i'm only human but uh, I find myself pulling on it and pulling on it, and then I'm like, oh, I forgot to put it on start. To where the steel, you press the button, it shuts it off, and it automatically goes back to the run position. So now I'm not sure how long, uh, if maybe this is a, an effective way to make it last longer, or what the case may be. Uh, but I would really like to see Echo do something like this because there's a lot of other companies that do this as well. But, uh, you know, Steel, of course, does it. And I really did love this feature about the Steel because I could just turn it off and I didn't have to worry about uh, whether or not it was in the run position before I started it the next time. Talking about the weight of these, both of these without the deflector and cutting attachment are both at 12.1 pounds. So uh, the CCs on the 3020 is going to be 30.5 cc. The 111R is 31.4 cc's. Now we're going to put this into the real test. This is where you're going to really notice the difference between these two machines the most. And uh, this is just both trimmer line, both full throttle. And uh, so let's show you some mowing a field footage and then we're also going to do a side by side but you really can't hear the uh, steel too much because of the echoes loudness per se and but we turn it off and I show you going the opposite away from the camera just so you can actually hear uh, the steel's sounds doing the same thing 
again. So let's show you some footage of that real quick. sounds we'll have to check the footage but uh to me while i'm using this now you're even you're going lower than i am as well and it sounds like the 111 struggling some uh which I'm, I'm glad we did this side by side that way we you know you can personally hear what each one sounds like as well. <clears throat> did notice less consumption of fuel when it came to the four stroke uh, steel. So this is a four stroke engine with a two stroke mix, uh, but it did have better fuel consumption than the 3020 did. So let's take that into consideration when doing this as well. Uh, the Echo did use a little bit more fuel quicker than the steel. Spark plugs now, this is where I think the Echo sets apart in another uh, a way that the steel don't, is the steel comes with a tool that you have to use in order to A, get to your spark plug, B, get to your air filter. So to do any of your maintenance on this pretty much, you have to have that tool. Now steel does provide that tool when you buy this as well as a strap, just like Echo provides a strap also. But on the Echo, you just pull the plug wire off and you're easily accessible to your plug. You don't have to pull any covers or anything like that off. Another ease is the Echo has a two-stage air filtration system. So once you pull this air filter off, which is toolless, by the way. So once you get this air filter off, you have one air filter in here and then you also have a pre-filter. So the pre-filter is gonna catch a lot of that dirt and debris before it gets into this filter, which is another thing that Echo sets their self apart on from the steel. So let's take a look at the steel's air filtration system. All right, so here's the tool still gives you to take and uh, do pretty much anything and everything. This also will take out your plug. And once again, the Echo does also come with one of these, but you do not need the tool right here like you do on the steel. So coming into the steel, we have the air filter. And then on the inside, there is no pre-filter whatsoever. You just have the air filter itself. So uh, some of this dirt and debris 
whatever, dust, things of that nature, are going to, in my personal opinion, would make this filter a lot dirtier, a lot faster than with the Echo having the two-stage air filtration system. So when it comes to ease of maintenance on these, I believe the Echo takes that side of it. Uh, just another reason is because you have to use the tool to get to the air filter and stuff on the steel. But another thing that the steel has is with it being a four stroke, it has a valve adjustment. Now steel recommends, according to a couple of dealers I've talked to, still recommends the valves to be adjusted about every hundred hours. Uh, so if your four stroke is starting to have trouble starting, things of that nature, the valve adjustment could be something that you may need to get done. Now, per dealer uh, could range anywhere from $80 to $100. So depending on how much you're using this, if you're using this trimmer for, uh, you know, 40 hours a week, eight hours a day, uh, then you're going to have to adjust these valves once to twice a month, uh, which could get pricey. So the gas savings that you're going to save with this are not necessarily going to help you in the long run, in my opinion, when you're going to have to take that extra money, uh, probably more than that extra money you would be spending in fuel cost and do maintenance on this trimmer. Now, uh, that's just my personal opinion. So let's take a look at some specs here, go step by step. So some specs between these two, the Echo 30.5 cc's, the Steel 31.4 cc's. Both have a 24 ounce fuel capacity on them. The Echo has a 20 inch swath. The Steel has a 16.5 inch swath. Both of these come in at 12.1 pounds without the cutting attachment and guard. Price point on these, the Echo, $399.99 and the Steel, $399.99. Echo does come with a two year commercial warranty as well as the Steel comes with a two year commercial warranty. And then the Echo comes with a five year consumer warranty and the steel comes with a two-year consumer warranty so overall guys let me know what you think about the comparison between these two trimmers my personal opinion of these is I would choose the echo and I've got some reasons behind that a couple of them being the 20 inch swath compared to the 16 and a half inch swath the two-stage air filtration system, the ease of maintenance on the Echo, uh, both are very comfortable. Really, overall, I'm going to be honest, you can't go wrong with either one of these. So, uh, you know, it's really going to come down to a couple of things, things to take into consideration when deciding whether or not you want to purchase one of these. Uh, the couple things I am personally would take into consideration is your dealer support. Uh, does your dealer carry both of these? If so, if something was to happen, then warranty is something you definitely are going to want to take advantage of and you're not going to want to drive an hour away to do so. Uh, dealer support is going to be key. Comfortability, when it comes to that, my honest recommendation for you is to go to the dealership, grab these, put them in your hand, walk around with them, act like you're using them, and see which one feels the most comfortable to you. Now the steel only comes with a one harness, a shoulder strap. The Echo does come with a two-point harness. So uh, if you know, you're looking for something that's going to be easier all around with that two-point harness and a brush cutter, then the Echo may be what you're going to choose. Power. Performance wise, both of these are going to get you and do pretty much what you want them to do. My overall experience on it was the Echo outperformed the Steel as it did not bog as much as the Steel wanted to and did. Warranty, warranty is a lot to take into consideration when looking at purchasing, especially a $400 trimmer. Warranty on the Echo, once again, two years, on both of these for the commercial side of business. 
when it comes to a homeowner slash consumer use, then you're looking at a five-year warranty with the Echo and it still offers the two-year warranty. So I hope you enjoyed this comparison video of my final thoughts and things of these trimmers. Hopefully this helps you and make your decision of something you're looking to purchase, whether it be the 111R or the 3020. So thanks for watching guys and we will see you soon.